Hello, welcome to another Incipia Apps or Optimization session. Today we're going to show you how to do a pre-post analysis of a description change. And this is very useful because in the App Store, you can't change the keywords, the screenshots, the title, the icon of your app between builds. However, you can change the what's new information and more relevant, the description of your app. So what we're going to do is enter in a new description so that the first few lines that show up in the app's description before you click more, we're going to put in a different description for that. And we're going to see how that impacts our KPI, which is going to be conversion rate. In new installs divided by impressions, or product page views rather, because that's what the description impacts. So before we had a couple of reviews showing up first before that more, now we're going to do a question, so do you hate boring to-do lists, and a straightforward description of what the app is. Try Goalie, a fun, game-like way to keep track of your to-dos. So we actually had already pushed this change live, um, but if you, if you make a change to your description, then you can see that this save button um, will be non-grayed out, and you'll be able to activate that. So clicking save will push that change live to the App Store for either your uh, description or your what's new. Now, we've just made this change on December 2nd, so what we want to do is look at performance for one week prior and one week after this change. Now, we're going to want to go back and Thanksgiving was a holiday which could have caused performance to go up or down. So as opposed to looking at this data point, we would probably want to look at one full week's worth of data um, somewhere before this holiday. So we could do, let's say, uh, the 13th through the 19th, and then the 4th through the 10th. You could also do different you know, days. So you could say the 3rd through the 9th, because that's still a full week's worth of data. After the change, uh, you could do the 17th to 23rd, and that's still a full week's worth of data somewhere before the change. Closer to the change is going to be yield the best results, naturally, because there could have been some things that happened in between uh, the date that you picked and then changed. However, the most important thing is to have a full week's worth or two weeks worth or four weeks worth of context. Um, because if you only use a few days, let's say that we did, we want to look at the three days before the change. So these three days, Tuesday through Thursday, and three days after the change, Saturday through Monday. This would give us different performance, uh, likely because we'd be getting Sunday and Saturday at the weekend after the change, and we wouldn't be getting the weekend before the change. So remember to just use a full week's worth of context when you're comparing to your post. So let's say that we had made a change on um, Saturday the 5th of November. So then we would want to look at the 29th through the 4th, and then we could look at the 6th through the 12th. Again, it's going to have a full week's worth of context before the change and after the change. So going back to iTunes Connect dashboard, we're going to go to App Analytics for Goalie. <clears throat> and we're going to look at the metrics to see the product page views installs or app units and we're going to look at the conversion rate. So here we've clicked in app analytics and metrics and here we can see the number of impressions per day. Now description change is only going to impact your product, product page view to uh, app unit conversion rate because description doesn't show up in your impressions. So we're going to want to see product page views and compare this to app units. And the difference between an app unit and an installation is that an installation tracks all downloads, including re-downloads or updates, but an app unit is just new downloads. So you can change to see a ratio of the two units, or you could see uh, dual axis, so product page views on one side of the axis, app units on the other. But what we're going to do is download this data to Excel so that we can compare. Again, we're assuming our change was made on November 5th, so we want the 29th to the 4th, and then the 6th to the 12th. So we want to pull back to October 29th. And 
that's fine because we just can, we could just download this to Excel and slice and dice it there. So we're looking for a conversion rate of app units to product page views. So you've just calculated the statistic. And now we're going to look at period. So we're going to use pre for the first seven days prior to the change, which is on the fifth. So here we can see if we have seven days worth of data. We're going to drag this down. So here's pre-change and here's post-change. See, we have seven days there. And the reason that we don't include the day of the change is because it's possible that the change was rolled out sometime during the day of the 5th, which means that part of the 5th we will have had the old change and part of the 5th will have had the new change. So that day could be skewed by that, by that nature. So now we're going to pull this into a pivot table and look at period here. Or rather, we can put it in the rows. We can see product page views, app units. Well, and we'll have to recalculate. Oops. We'll have to recalculate the conversion rate here. So, assuming that we made the change on the fifth, we can see that our conversion rate goes from 45% to 43%. And this is a oops. 5% decline in performance. What also may be helpful is for us to calculate the uh, a longer extension of the average performance. It's possible that one week's worth of data may may not produce a significant change, but over time performance continues to change. So instead of one week pre and post, you could choose two weeks pre or post, um, especially if the change is, is significant, you want to gather uh, more data to, to be sure. Or if there are other things that are going on, uh, or if there's seasonality, you might want to look over a longer period of time, different time period. But the basic premise is to look at the chain, the performance pre and post change to see how things perform. In this case, we saw hypothetically conversion rate decline by 5%. Now 5% is, is not huge. It's, it's not a massive change. If you see double digit changes in performance, that's when you can start to really say, all right, this, this was a significant change. Or if you have a lot of data uh, and usually you see, let's say the last 28 days benchmark was um, 35 percent or the yeah if you're looking over a longer period of time and the benchmark is, is more flat and stable then having a small increase or deep decrease uh, can mean a significant thing it just depends on whether your data is volatile in which case you want a larger change to be sure or if it's more flat and stable in which case a smaller change may be a significant thing but in this case uh, we would probably conclude that there wasn't significant um, performance different, difference for that change to say that it was significantly worse. We'd like to see about 10% or, or more change of performance. So that's how you do pre-post analysis. Uh, if you have any questions on this, feel free to comment or send us an email or if, uh, to uh, hello at incipia.co or follow us on social and, and tweet at us. We're very responsive to, to social. Um, if there are any topic requests for the future, please let us know. Um, and thank you for watching.